this lesson, we're going to be looking at John Mayer's cover of Message in a Bottle by the Police, specifically the version from Mayer's 2003 live DVD, Any Given Thursday. By this time, after he'd played it many, many years live, it morphed from an arpeggio-heavy version, reminiscent of what Sting himself used to close off his solo concerts with, into an open-string, chord-snatching, sloppy thing that I'm about to show you. It's in standard tuning. He uses a pick for some parts, so stow one between your fingers, and let's get started. Let's take a look at the chord that we're going to end up moving vertically and horizontally up and down the neck to do the intro and verse parts. So that's the chord shape. This is a C sharp sus2. I've got my first finger on the A4, fourth fret of the A string here, second finger on the D6, and pinky on the G8. Very haunting chord, very wide intervals, and quite a handful if you're not used to playing it. You might have to practice that stretch up a bit for a wide span chord. Then we take the whole thing and we shift it down four frets. Our first finger is behind the nut, so we're going to utilize the open A string. And I actually changed the fingering up. I like to fret that with my first finger on the D2 and my third finger on the G4. And this is an A sus2. Then we shift the whole thing up two frets so that our first finger is on the A2. That's a B note, so it's a B sus2 chord. And then we throw the whole thing up one string closest to your body there. And that's an F sharp sus2. So the C sharp sus2 into the A sus2 into the B sus2 into the F sharp sus2. So that's not how you play it. I'm just arpeggiating the chords so you can hear what they're doing. Let's look at the rhythm. Song starts out with a pickup measure that starts with an open E and then the C sharp sus2 chord which we leave hanging in outer space for a while before settling in on this kind of rhythm. And let's look at measure one slow. It's important to notice in the intro, in the first four measures of the intro, the first note is always longer. It's an eighth note followed by a bunch of 16th notes. So your first one is always going to be long, followed by a bunch of faster ones that settle into a rhythm. And the very first time we pluck this C sharp sus2 chord, we're plucking it, there's no slap involved. So Then we slide down into our A chord, and we're going to pump that open A twice. And then we're going to snatch the two bottom fretted notes. here, your thumb is going to be doing the bass notes, like in the open E here, and then your first three fingers can pluck that first C sharp chord, and then when you transition down into the A, your thumb is going to pluck the open A twice, and your first two fingers are going to snatch the bottom fretted notes. And we're going to have a slap, and I'm slapping around the fifth fret. I like to slap on the note, or the string I'm going to play next. Then we're going to go into our B chord. That one we're going to arpeggiate the first two notes. So thumb, first finger, and then with my first and second fingers, I'm going to snatch the bottom two fretted notes. So it's not an arpeggio like this. It's note, note, two notes at the same time. Slap, then we're going to make our F sharp chord. We're going to do two pumps on the bottom note. Our thumb and then our two fingers, which are already hooked in underneath here, are going to pluck the bottom fretted notes. Slap. Then our first finger will slide up to the A4, D4, bar those, and sound that note. Let's try that again slow. And you basically repeat that for measure two. One difference between measure one and two is the first C sharp sus2 chord we pluck softly in measure one, but in measure two, we're going to do a slap flick. And a slap flick is where you take your thumb and your first finger, and the first finger is folded up like this, and it comes down on the chord and explodes, fans out. An explosion at the same time your thumb hits the bass note muted at the sixth fret. It lets us sound the chord and at the same time get a percussive slap to maintain that mm. Slap thing that Mary, Mary likes to have going. So measure two. Everything else is the same. And one note about this one here: a lot of times that um, 
A4, D4 bar. Some people might be tempted just on that last F sharp chord to just take your second finger, lay it down flat, and get those notes. But Mayer actually slides up with the first finger and ends off the measure like that because it leaves your hand in an excellent place to start the C sharp sus 2 chord all over again. So, slap flick. There's a nice anomaly in measure 3 worth mentioning. It sounds like this. And the very last chord, we have this kind of thing happening. And it's a slap flick on the second last note. So, we arpeggiate the F sharp chord. Now we lift off our pinky as we do a slap flick, concentrating on the note barred with our second finger on D4, and then our first finger has the bar going on D2, so we can do that. Like that. So I use my thumb, first finger, second finger, slap finger with the first, and then do an upstroke on the very last note. Measure 4, the last measure of the intro, is more of the same, except he doesn't arpeggiate the B chord. He just does two double pumps on the low note, and snatches the high part, similar to what we do elsewhere. So it's up to you to play it the way you want. You can throw in the arpeggiated, or double pump. It's really up to you. John Mayer's brain is on autopilot when he's playing this stuff, but I myself like to hear the little innuendos and, and uh, neat little shitty throws in there from time to time that really catch the ear. That is the intro. Measures 5 and 6 start the singing portion of verse 1, and there's a major rhythmic change here. That first open E note that's going to be played again is no longer an 8th note. It's got a 16th note value. It's going to be played as fast as all the subsequent notes. I'll play the last intro measure and then come into verse 1 and see if you can spot the difference. So this is the last measure of the intro. Did you spot that? So instead of having that long note, the verse sounds like this. It's everything 16th notes. So measure 5, slow, sounds like this. slow so we start off with the open E, it's the C sharp chord, and then two pumps on the low A here, snatch the high part of the A chord, slap. The B chord is a bit different, we have the open A into the fretted B, so we're going from the open A to the A2, and then snatch the high part of that chord, slap, and then we're gonna kind of pluck the entire F sharp chord and then hit the bottom part of the, the chord with our thumb, and then come up with the high part, and then slap, and then an open E. Let's go over that F sharp again. We're going to pluck all three notes together. I've got my thumb and first two fingers curled under the bottom three strings. All three notes together, followed by just the thumb striking the lowest note closest to you, and then we, with our two fingers, pluck the remaining fretted notes. And we have a slap and then an open E to end it off. This measure 5 ends off with an open E. Measure 6 is the same until we get to the ending. So measure 6 ends off with the barred A4, D4 with the first finger. And that's something you're going to see. Let's, let me alternate between those two. Measure five. Measure six. So measure five, going into five to six is nice because it ends with an open E and it starts with an open E. So it gives the illusion of a double pump, one coming off the last measure and one beginning the next.
but as we said, we're alternating. So measure five ends with a open E, measure six ends with the barred A4, D4, measure seven ends with the open E, measure eight will end with the barred A4, D4. And the trick with that is when he's singing, he transitions between measures with the open E, and when he's not singing, he does the bar. I'll demonstrate. Dun, dun, dun. One neat thing that sometimes happens in the verse part is this. That open A, one, two, and then the chord. Sometimes the first open A is strong, and the next one is very light, or flub somewhat, but the chord is strong, and it gives the illusion that the second open A was never played. So it turns something like this into something like this changes up the timing just by playing around with the dynamics a bit. So, so we're exaggerated again, it's like this. Sounds like it was never played. But uh, a lot of times it is. I just did something there. You'll see that too on the A part. Instead of just doing... Um, do the whole chord and then the open A by itself and then just the two metal fretted strings. And that first initial chord includes the open B string. So we're plucking four strings here. Thumb is on the open A, we fret our A chord, pull all thumb and the first three fingers out, and then just the open A by itself, and then come back with the fretted portion in the middle like this. also see that happen in the F sharp chord where the chord itself is strong the low bass note is very light and then the finger notes here the two at the end are strong and it gives the illusion of this chord sounding like that and one of those variations the A chord Variation figures into measure 12, the last measure of verse 1, which takes us into the pre chorus. That sounds like this. And ending on an A string, open A. Measures 13 to 17 of the pre chorus. This is the lyric where he's like, I send out songs to the world. And uh, sounds like this. chorus. Slow, we start off with an A chord. So we take our first finger and we bar the D2 all the way down and make sure that we're sounding the open A string, the fifth string. It starts off like this. A, slap, and then the open A string twice. The thumb, and then with our two fingers we snatch the two middle strings that are fretted. Come down with a slap, we transition into a D5 chord here. We're only fretting with our second fret, the G2, and then the B3 with our third finger. We're not playing the high, high E, so just these. And the way we pluck that is we pluck the two middle strings, the open D and then the G2, and then we pluck all three. So slap, and then we have an open E into this beautiful chord, two open E's, and then this E at nine chord. an open A string. That E A nine chord E add nine chord fretting is this. We have the open E, second finger on A2, third finger on D4, first finger on G1, and then open B, open E. Let's do that one more time with the rhythm. So we do two open E's to end that off. Uh -uh snatch that whole E add 9 chord here for slapping and ending with the A and then doing the whole thing again. Similar rhythm.
measure ends off with an open E. And it also features a slap flick. So this is measure 14, the second time we do this thing with the A. Slap flick on the A chord immediately. Back, open, open. And then we have one, two, three on the D, slap. And then one, two, three on the E at nine, slap. And then open E, posing into another chord. And that is the A with an F sharp in the bass. So we do our A chord with our second finger on D2 and our third finger on D2 and our thumb is now on low E2. You can strum that whole thing, it sounds nice. The rhythm for that is... And a bit of a rest at the end. So this is a little alter, altered rhythm here. One more time. So we have the F sharp in the root here now. Slap and then two bass notes. Come up with the top end of the chord. Transition to the D chord and we go one, two, three, slap, and then a bit of a rest. And then for the next measure, we repeat that same rhythm more or less. Slap, we add this open E to F sharp note, and then the D, one, two, three, and it's like one, two, three, slap, low E. One more time on that, that's measure 16. And then we finish it off one more time. Slap, two, two, snaps the lower part of the chord. And then three Ds, one, two, three, let it hang. And then a slap and into the A. So let's do that whole thing slow. I'll do it to speed so you kind of get the rhythm and then we'll do it one more time slow. takes us into the chorus. Measures 18 to 22 make up the first chorus and here's the first two measures. And let's go through that slow. centers around an E6 chord. To do that we take our first finger we bar from the A4 all the way down and then we're going to be doing some hammer-ons here. So the hammer-on portion and the initial chord form is going to be the third finger on D6 and the second finger on B5. So put your thumb on the A open A string or A string and then Curl your fingers under the adjacent strings and be prepared to only play these middle four strings. So slow it sounds like this. We're going to pluck the first, the top three strings in the chord, the thumb and the first two fingers. And we're going to come down with a slap flick. Then we're going to lift off the bar to get the open A with the thumb. And then the thumb also plays, put the bar back, the A4 again. And then our fingers alternate and come off the bottom part of the chord. So the first part sounds like this. This is a very natural motion because your thumb and your fingers are opposed from each other. And come back with a slap. So, chord, slap, flick, sounding the whole chord this time. Lift off the bar, open A, put the bar back, A4, and then with the fingers, snatch the bottom part of the chord, and then slap, transition into the A sus2 chord we did. So, two pumps on the open A string. And then pull that, the bottom part of that A sus2 chord. And this time we're including the open B string. 
because it's the same note as the fretted G4. So to that point, let's do it from the top. Adds a lot of meat to it, those open strings. Slap, take your second finger and put it on the E4. We're going to add a G sharp note to this chord. We're going to pluck that whole thing. So uh, we're going to spread our claw apart a bit. Thumb is going to be on the bass note, and then our first, second, and third fingers are going to be fretted here, here, and here. And we're going to pluck that whole thing and the bass note by itself. And then we're going to reach down and hit the bottom three strings. That sounds really sweet. So we're only going to be sounding on that high part the G5, sorry, G4, and then the B open, and then the same note, and then the high E open. Let's take that from the top. Slap, and then we start a bar here. And when you do this bar, you're only going to play the uh, the bar from the D4, G4, B4, but fret that A4 because you're going to use it in the next measure. So let's do measure 18 slow from the top. So uh, I use my three fingers to hit the bottom part of that bar, and then we're going to do a, a thumb on the A4, and then hammer on at the same time, like that. So going into the next measure, that chord is ringing, that's the open part of the hammer on chord, and then we're going to hit the bass note, and then hammer on. It's going to sound like this. To do a slap flick. This is kind of tricky. So this note is from the last measure. And we add this one. We hammer on, and then slap flick down, and then repeat the same notes. And we end off with an open A. So let's take those two measures. Let's concentrate on the hammer on chord one more time. Then we'll do the both measures back to back. So again, the hammer on part, barring from the A4 all the way down take the bottom three notes and pluck them. The thumb, strike the A4, hammer on, and then slap flick. And then open A, lift off the bar, put the bar back, four, and then you're on three. So let's do those two measures, 18 and 19, back to back. Subsequent measures of the chorus are similar. Measure 20, for instance, is exactly like 18, except for the first and the last notes. We start off with a single A4 note, but everything else is the same. Except for we're ending on the open A. And then we're going into measure 21, which is weird. It sounds like this. It's got some JMTS, some John Mayer tricky shit. He changes up the rhythm a bit. So coming off that open A, measure 21 starts like this. We have the A4, slap, and we're plucking the chord in this fashion. So what we're doing there is we got our fingers all hooked in, our thumb on the top fretted note, and our next three fingers cemented underneath. We're going to take our index finger out of the equation, pluck the three notes like this. Put our index finger back, but only pluck the top three notes of the chord. These ones here. Take the index finger out again, and then the top three notes again. And then we move to that next chord with the open A. And then the A sus2, we have a slap, we have an open E. Into the fourth fret of the E string, and then we snatch the high part of the chord. Slap, and then we end off with yet another open A. And then the last measure sounds like this. Same again, but we end off with an open E before going into the interludes. So let's play that whole chorus one through to speed, and then I'll slow it down one last time.
Before we leave Chorus 1, I just want to show you one thing from Chorus 2. Chorus 2 is identical almost to Chorus 1, but there is one small difference in measure 43, and that's this. And that's a hammer-on from the... After the, after the initial chords. It sounds like this. We have the uh, chord slap flick. And with our thumb we hit the open A. And instead of striking the A4 with our thumb again, we just hammer on into it. You really hear it. It does stand out. So you can throw that in sometimes if you want to jazz things up a bit. So that's measure 43 of chorus 2. There's 23 and 24 are what I'm calling the interlude. There's a couple of them, and this is when you finally get to use your pick. So coming out of that chorus, we hit our last open string, and we do this. Something like that. Even though I've painstakingly done the tab up for that part, every time you hear it, upstrokes, downstrokes, they match the, uh, the recorded track perfectly. I'm going to tell you right now, ignore what I put. He goes forward, he makes it up as he goes along, and I think this is definitely a part that you want to do that yourself. It's a beautiful chord. It's a B major sus4 with an F sharp in the bass. I don't know what you want to call it. And it's like this. We have our thumb on E2. We're muting the fifth string. That doesn't sound. It smells bad. We have our second finger on D2 and our third finger on G3. And the B and the high E are open. And this is where you're going to want to transition to the pick. So coming off that open string of the chorus, the very first chord you want to strike should be with your first finger. As you do that, transition to the pick and then start doing this. And then you're back into the intro. So let's go through slowly what I would probably do in this part. So transitioning, first chord with the finger. A lot of what he does seems to be, when he has the pick, it's kind of down two downstrokes followed by an upstroke. And the downstrokes are low strings, mid strings, and then upstroke on the high strings. Now we have this kind of strumming. We have this down, 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 and down. So we start off with the big chord, transition to the pick, down, mid down, upstroke. And then kind of put the pick away after the last slap in open. Some of the things you can do to make it your own are just uh, arpeggiated in interesting ways. Do whatever you want. It's it's kind of. Uh... sure you keep track of the number of beats and uh, make sure you end at the right spot and transition back into the hands. We're going to listen to him do his thing on the way out of this section so you can kind of listen to some of his things and make it your own. By this time you've seen everything that you're going to see. There's just minor differences from here on out. I'm going to skip verse 2 completely because it's so similar. Same with chorus 2. But uh, coming into intro 3 uh, it's a bit different. So like this, that's measure 49 and it's the same repeated three times. And it's just double pumps on the bass notes everywhere. Except the last measure ends like this. It ends with that bar. After that, verse 3 is similar to a combination of verse 1 and verse 2, but verse 3 ends like this. And we transition to the pick early because we're going to be using it in pre-chorus 3, which is fun. So it sounds like this. We've done this before. Coming up to the B part, instead of doing the B sus2, we're going to do a B5. 
and that's our first finger on A2, third finger on D4, pinky on G4, leaving the open B string and high E open. So we transition to that, have a slap, I do a downstroke on that chord with my fingers. It's a long eighth note, so we have time to switch to the pick and we go down, and then a down up, mute it. Do that slow whole thing. do have time when you do that. Eighth note, switch the pick, up, down, and then I mute it before going into the next measure. Measures 53 to 57 are the pre-chorus three. This time it's a strum version, and it's a jolly good strum, and it sounds something like this. So John Mayer is a fantastic strummer. His sense of timing is impeccable. Let's see what he's doing. As your 53 slow sounds like this. So we're doing two down strokes with the A chord. And then we mute the strings and go down, up, down. Then we do the A chord one more time. And then a muted down stroke. Transition to the D chord. And the D is like a long D first, and then we come up stroke, and then a muted strum down, and we switch to our E add 9 chord, and it sounds like this. So we go down up on the low strings, and then down, down, down on the full chord, and then down up on the open low notes. One more time, slow. on an upstroke because we always start the next measure with a down. So that's measure 53. Measure 54 is a very similar repetition. We have on the A chord down, down, muted, down, up, down, but this changes a bit. One more down on the A and then a down, up, down, muted again. So that changes the timing of the D and the D is three down strokes. And we can move to the E add 9. We have the open part up top. One more time on that measure 54. Let's do the two together, 53 and 54 slow. Measures 55 and 56 are the same, and they feature the A chord with the F sharp and the root. Sounds like this slow. And again, we're ending on an upstroke. We have an open down on the open strings. So let's do our chord with the F sharp and the bass. We're going to do two down strokes. The first note will be a long note value. The second one will be a 16th note, so it's a bit faster. We do the same down, up, down that we did before muted, but this time we, uh, we're sounding the bass notes of the chord. Then we have the bass note F sharp just by itself with the downstroke. Then we hit the high part of the chord with the downstroke. And as we transition, we hit a down up on the open strings and then three downstrokes on the D. One, two, three. And then down up on the open strings. Close off with an up down on the lowest open strings to us. Measure fifty seven ends out this strummed pre chorus. It sounds like this. Take the opportunity to get rid of our pick, slap on the A string, and then pluck it open and end it off. So that's the 
A chord with the F sharp in the bass. We end off on the D chord. Let it hang in space for a while before slapping and getting back into the finger based uh, chorus. Let's do that slow and then one time to speed. And then to speed. Then it's back into the chorus. Chorus 3, R measures 58 to 62, and he throws in a whole bunch of syncopated licks at the end of some of the chorus measures. Let's take a look at the first two measures, 58 59. <laughs> Beginning starts off as we've seen before. This part. The differences in measure 59 coming off of this. Do a slap and then some selective chord plucking. We pluck the whole chord, the four middle strings. And then the top three strings of the chord, and then all four again. We have a slap, then we pluck the top four. And we do a percussive downward pluck with the thumb, and then a percussive upward pluck with the two middle fingers, before transitioning to the open A, to the A chord, fretted, and then the open A again. And then we go down with our second finger to the fourth fret of the E. And do that. Let's just play that slow. on the second snatch of that chord to get the high part. One more time, slow. And the speed sounds like this. Really nice percussive bit. Measure 60 and 61. stuff going on in there. Measure 60 is very similar to the other ones we've had. Here it differs. This is a four note chord we're going to do. So we're barring from the A4 all the way down. And we're going to hammer on into the next measure. We're going to do that kind of thing. That's the rhythm. So taking it from that hammer on part. Coming off of that last measure, we have the. That's the rhythm we do. After that, we do a bunch of syncopated. We do three of these. And what we're doing there is we're lifting off the chord so our thumb can play the open A, and then we're pressing back on the chord so our fingers can get the bottom part of that E6 chord. Let's take it from the uh, hammer on part. And there's a slap in there to keep the timing. This is almost the feel you want to go for. It's almost like a triplet, but it's not. And you're really kind of almost rolling your hand like this in a circular motion and keying off the, oppo the posability of your thumbs and your fingers. And don't forget that slap in there to keep time. Let's do the whole thing just super slow. And that second part is... So it's open A to the chord part, open A to the chord part, Open A and then right to the E4 and the high chord. Slap open. Very cool. And I think he just makes that stuff up. 
Measure 62 closes it off, and he makes a little change to that E6 chord. Sounds like this. So what he's done is he's taken the E6, taking his pinky and putting it on high E7 here. Sounds like that now. And we pluck the inner four strings, the four middle strings. And we do a slap flick and really accent that newly fretted note. And with our thumb, we pluck the A4, and then our first finger takes the D6, and then I do a, like an upstroke chord with my first finger to get that. Like that. And then after that, it's the same. Let's do that slow. So after another interlude and another intro, intro 4 in this case, which I'm not going to go into because we've seen it all before, we arrive at measure 69, which is the start of verse 4. And you're not going to find this verse on the audio CD of Any Given Tuesday because they've chopped it and gone right to the ending. And they did this probably to fit more songs on the 74-minute CD. That's all you can hold on a CD, and apparently that's the length of Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, uh, Sony exec chairman's wife's favorite piece of music. So there's that. It's a variation of some things you've seen before, but arranged in a different manner. So let's just kind of go over some of the things you're going to see in verse 4. So you're going to see that one where we're substituting the chord at the A part and at the F sharp. And a lot of it is double pumps on everything. It's a mixture of the double pumps and the chord. So you can kind of play it any way you want. And the lyric he's humming is state of emergency, something like that. It's, uh, I don't know why he threw it in. I don't know if it's from another song or what, but it's something that you're only going to get on the DVD. So uh, spin that DVD up and have a listen. Now we arrive at measure 80, which is the ending. It sounds like this. chords. The C sharp root slap A chord and then we immediately have an open A after that slap and the B root slap and then an F sharp minor down stroke with the thumb and then we do an up stroke with the pick. So that F, that F sharp minor is just a second fret bar everything. Third fret on the A4, pinky on the D4. time. And you're done. Just before we go, another way Merritt played this early on in his career, like prior to 2000, was similar to the way Sting used to play the song to end off his solo concerts, which I had the pleasure of seeing when I was like 17 or 18 years old in my hometown. And it sounds more like this. do that. I've included uh, the way he did it on a popular bootleg at the end of the tab, so you can kind of go through and do that. Maybe you can make a combination of this one. You know, it's really up to you. It's a great tune, many ways to play it. And one last thing. If you're like me, you're a little kid listening to the police version of the tune, you're wondering what the hell Andy Summers is doing with those crazy harmonics in the middle part where it gets all soft. Well, those are harmonics, but it's called the Lenny Bro technique. What you do is, it's, it's a variation of harmonics played entirely with the one hand. So instead of doing this, you're going to use your first finger to touch the harmonic node, the 12th fret, and your thumb is behind and you're going to pluck it with the thumb. And the Lenny Bro technique adds open strings and a cascading type of thing. I gotta cut 
grab my nails to do this. But in the middle of that song, Summers was doing something like this. He was barring the second fret and doing the harmonic on the sixth string at the 14th fret and then hitting the third string like that. Just simple like that. So there's always a lot of confusion as to what was going on in that part. I've seen people think that they've gone so as far to say that this is what Andy Summers was doing. You know, they hear a crazy arpeggio in it. And they, they try to do the chiming with that. I'll just give you that one because it's kind of neat. Pinky's on the A9, second finger is on the D7, first finger is on the G6. And we're going to do this. 12 frets above that A9. Then we do the next one, 12 frets above the D7. Then we hit the open B string. I use my second finger for those strings down there. Then we're going to chime the 12 frets above the G6. Then we're going to hit the open E string. Then we're going to hit the B7 harmonic here. Hit the E5. And then fret the E9 and hit the harmonic up here. Now that is not what Andy Summers did. But it's neat what some people hear when that's not even there. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and uh, look forward to doing the next one.